with my table set being built in my last video. Of course, I needed a garden fence to surround it. And I want an arbor with it. So I built one. You want one too? Follow me and lass uns anfangen. Like most of the time, I start my project with a trip to the local hardware store. Since I have my tractor, unloading has become so much more easy and actually fun. I started a garden fence by setting the posts. To make it easier, instead of just being braced, I attached some of the boards to the post to keep the post in the exact spot that I wanted. Once it's positioned right, I pour the cement. Always make sure the post is still level after pouring the cement, since it could have shifted. First add some water to the hole, then add the fast setting cement. You can add more water on top if needed. I repeated this step for all the other posts. Add water to the hole, pour the cement back in, and then add some more water if needed. I'm not using traditional braces to hold the posts in place. I hold them in place with the garden fence boards that I attach to the bottom of the posts. To attach those boards to the posts, I'm using pocket holes. I cut the fence boards to size using my miter saw. To make sure all the boards are at the same height, I use my speed square to mark the correct height on the 4x4. Then I line up the board with the mark and use the pocket hole screws to attach it. For the side pieces of the arbor, I'm using two 2x4s. And again, I'm using pocket holes to attach them. Here I'm building an inside frame on the arbor to attach the fence to. Instead of pre-drilling holes, I just used the clamp to hold the piece in place. Here you can see the structure is still not embedded in cement, so I'm still checking for level before I attach pieces. Just like the surrounding posts, I put the cement after I build the general structure of the arbor. Before I added more water, I made sure everything was level. And this is what I got so far. This will be the entrance with the arbor, giving it a straight shot to the table setup. While the cement set, I decided to start the stained parts of the arbor, and then I started to build a frame for the fence. For the fence, I'm recycling fencing material that was left on the farm from the previous owner. Therefore, I'm building frames that a fence will be attached to. Before that, I will stain them as well. Once the cement set, I started to build the rest of the arbor. For the arbor, I purchased two 2x6s. Using the miter saw, I cut the corners to give it a modern shape. I copied the same exact cut to the second piece of the arbor. And that's how the end product looked like. I feel like it's kind of like a modern look to the traditional arbor. I made sure it fits one more time. And then I gave it a quick sand. And like always, let's have fun with that. And this shall be sufficiently smooth. Ghost in the back.
post in the back. For this build, I recycled the 4x4s as well. There were a bunch of screws and nails left in it, so I just used the angle grinder to cut them off. And since I was at it, I used my circular saw to cut all the 4x4s to the same length. Then I attached the front and back piece of the arbor. I've seen people use some really fancy good looking screws for that, but I just used some deck screws. Once those two pieces were attached to the arbor, I started cutting the pieces that go on top of that and I gave them a similar angle at the ends. I made sure the pieces were spaced out evenly and square to the front and back. I also make sure the overhang is the same on both sides. Then I used exterior screws to attach them. Now this is a very important step. Once all the pieces are attached, you have to make the required strength test. This structure will stand through the Florida hurricane season. That arbor will go nowhere, it's bomb and fest. The final step for the arbor was to stain it. Of course I will need a door for the arbor to enclose the whole garden area. I'm building a simple door out of 2x4s, using pocket holes. I build a simple rectangle shape and then use the piece of lumber as a cross brace for more stability. This will also prevent the door from sagging in the future. For the build I'm using pocket hole screws and glue. Let's make sure the door fits one more time. And it fits perfectly. Now it's time to stain. While the stain on the door frame is drying, I started to attach the fence around the arbor. For this job specially, I purchased the staple gun with fence staples. However, I noticed quickly that this fence won't stay in place with those staples. So I came up with a better idea. I used screws with washers to secure the fence tightly to the frame. For this project, if I wouldn't have recycled this fence, I would have purchased a thinner one to easily bend it into place. This fence is very rigid and there was just no way to get any previous bends out. The pieces are cut to size using my angle grinder. And then again I use screws and washers to attach it to the frame. I had a total of 6 of those frames. Once the fence was attached to the frames, I set the frames into place. I secured the frames to the 4x4 posts. And what do you think? Not too bad looking at all. I'm gonna take a break for the day. It's the next day now and the stain has fully dried. I'm using hinges to attach the door. Before attaching the door, I would recommend to attach the fence first. However, I ran out of fence and I have to gather some more from another side of the property. Therefore, I will finish that later. I also included a self-closing latch. Once the outside structure was built and the garden was fully fenced in, it's time to start on the inside beds. For the beds, I'm using the same fence pickets like I used for the outside. I started by cutting off the dog ears. Then I drilled pocket holes in all the pieces. The first two pieces I attached to the 4x4 post. All the other pieces were attached by using little pickets that I dug down in the ground. Make sure everything is level and square. Usually I like to give my plant roots about 13 inches of growing space. That means I need at least three boards height. I decided to raise the level of the depth by adding a third row for part of the garden bed. 
so the front will be two rows high and the back will be three, giving it some extra growing space. I use pieces of lumber to connect the boards inside to keep them hopefully from bending in the future. And we are fertig! Another exciting project that I can finally cross off the list. What do you think? Would you build something like that yourself? Are you a gardener as well? Thank you so much for watching. If you like my work, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and press the little bell next to it to get notified of new videos. Also, I would really appreciate if you would like, share and comment. I read every single one of my comments and I try to reply to most of them. If you'd like to see more content, you can check out my Patreon. It's like buying me a coffee a month, I really appreciate it. Every support goes a long way. So I can continue making YouTube videos. See you next Friday. Tschüss!